Hello guys and welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we finished up the investigation and we're moving on into the court day, the only court day we were assigned by the killer, because if we don't finish up in one day here, then Maya's as good as dead. So let's move on and hope that we can finish this up real quick. Adrian did it? And that's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman wouldn't do anything like that. In court today, there will be a, mount of, a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there is someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer. Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Mia, we must get a complete acquittal today. I know. I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's is either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of today. Indeed. Well, let's get going. It's him. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit, how shall we say, tired. Don't worry, people don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. G ah. For myself, you must win today's trial, which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial opens, even if you don't like my gift. I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Wait! The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer, dude, who was that? Uh, um, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Huh. That's a bit weird. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor! Please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an un unknown gunman. W what? Sh shot? Somehow, I think this is the present that man was talking about. His present? Miss Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she disappeared, this would be to your advantage. This... this is totally insane! M Miss Von Karma, is she alright? I don't have that answer. She is alive and in stable condition. That's good. Whew! You, you, you're. I thought he'd show up. Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Miss Francisca von Karma cannot appear into in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready, naturally. Miss von Karma was shot in her right shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. The court acknowledges the prosecution. Mr. Wright. Wright. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Now then, 
The prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Witness, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. D detective Gumshoe? The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Uh, yes, sir! Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. And get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah. It would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Hmm. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Bare facts of the case. This might have happened after the Hero of Heroes Awards ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Carita, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely moited, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the moida. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room. Yes, sir. Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their rooms, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Alrighty, so our first testimony here of the final case, facing off against Edgeworth. I know we've already established that, but still super awesome. Murder happened after the Hero of Heroes award ceremony, sir. Hold it! Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m. It then ended around 8 p.m. And then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim's body was found, correct? Which is to say, the murder occurred during that 30-minute break period. Hmm. Please continue with her testimony, detective. The victim, Juan Carita, was found dead in his hotel room. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who is this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Madame God's manager. She's really, she's a really pretty lady. So, ah, so, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Mr. On Guard. But after visiting his room, she went to the victim's room to get him for the show, sir. I see, and that's when she found the victim's body. Okay, so, the solution for this cross-examination is to press these next three statements. If looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely moited, sir. The cause of death? Wasn't that because Mr. Carita was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. Take a good hard look at the crime photo. Now a real pro's attention would be drawn here, to the bandana. Hmm, banana. Um, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck, sir. Ah, yes, yes, I see. His banana-scented bandana. <laughs> Then, what about the knife? It seems to have been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after his death. Hmm, we have a crafty murderer on our hands here. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. And why did you think that? Because it was empty, pal. The German ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere on the scene of the crime. Oh, so... Oh, then how about this theory? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime to get it. How's that? Um, we thought of that too, but... But? The only fingerprints on the guitar case were the victims. Only the victims, huh? Hmm, I see. Ah, so much for my theory then. 
I mean, I guess they could have been wearing gloves. I don't know. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the moita. What convinced did it? What convinced you it had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan Corita, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar inside the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. I believe that is enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Hmm. Which brings me to my next point. Why then did the police arrest Matt on guard? Because there was reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in full swing. Very well. Detective Gumshoe, please testify about this manner matter. Yes, sir. Matt on God and Juan Carrito were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That's motive enough in my book. As for evidence, there's the German Ninja's button. He was ripped off the ninja costume when it was found in Mr. Ungard's Hakama. The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. The defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a pre premeditated moida. Hmm, so the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used in the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly, sir. And there's this button. That was found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. And is this button also covered in blood? Yes, and we know that the blood is the victim's blood, so... What? All of this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? Heh. <laughs> I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you'd like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. Ah. So there is a simple contradiction here, but I'll go ahead and press around as always. But in terms of popularity, Mr. Ungard won, did he not? Yeah. But you know what's ironic, pal? Juan Corita was always one step behind Mr. Edgard in everything. This year it seemed like he'd finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Corita lost the Grand Prix in the end. And that is too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. They each thought the other guy was in his way, that's motive enough in my book. Wait just one second here. Mr. Ungard was beating Mr. Corita in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but, uh... Which means, in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill at all. Hmm. Yes, I quite agree. Well, detective? Um, it's not... Well... I guess if you put it that way, then yeah, the defendant would have had no motive. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Yeah? No, not you too, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. That's... I look forward to your pension negotiations. No! Now, now, Detective. Let's continue with the testimony. Mm. <laughs> no, my poor pension too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. Um, what about what I was saying? Hello? Anyone? As for the evidence, there's the Jammin' Ninja's button. Do you have any proof that the button belonged to the victim? Huh? I don't get you, pal. Oh, um, let me put it this way. 
I'm asking you if you have any evidence to back up your claim that this button was ripped off of the Jamma Ninja's costume. Huh? But can't you tell, but can't you tell just by looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it. Anyone could have smeared that blood on there afterward. M -m Mr. Edgeworth, help me, sir. All right. I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now to reel this one in. Thread. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And that thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it is a perfect match. Yeah, that's it! They're a perfect match, pal! Ugh. That's Edgeworth for you. Never misses a beat. He was ripped off of the ninja costume and found in Mr. Ongard's Hakama. When was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded, we rounded up everyone who knew Mr. Karita. And then we did a search on them all. That's when we found the button. Hmm, so it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Hey, what is he trying to say about me here? The defendant's fingerprints were also all over the knife. How are the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Huh? What do you mean, pal? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, did he hold it normally or overhand? Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the bumbling of this department. Hopeless. Were you paying attention to the testimony, right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There's no way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of the murder. Hmm, so is the defendant the owner of this knife then? The defendant brought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. There's no way this was a premeditated murder, even if he bought the knife. Sorry, pal. This isn't just some pocket knife. It's not really useful for anything, and you can't just walk around with it either. Ah. Uh. Well, this is not good. The prosecution can prove it was a premeditated murder we're done for. Phoenix. Yes? There's something very interesting about what the detective said just now. Think carefully, before it's too late. A button covered in the victim's blood, and a knife with on guard's fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gavel in closing. We're still in a world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be. Okay, Phoenix? So the solution for this is to go to the last statement here. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a premeditated murder. Which is very strange, because... If we look at the knife... Gate water is engraved on it, meaning it was not something that he bought at a store or something like that. This was something from the Gatewater Hotel. Wait a second. Ooh, what? So, you're, so the basis of your argument that this was a premeditated murder is simply that my client bought a knife beforehand. That's right, Bell. The defendant did not buy this knife. Uh, huh? Take a good look at the handle of this knife, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Huh? This has a Gatewater seal set into the handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel. The Gatewater Hotel. Uh-oh. The murder knife was actually property of the hotel, which means that this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that is very true. This is a very big... <laughs> what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was premeditated or not has already been determined. How so? I admit this knife is hotel property. There's no one currently on the police force that is dumb enough not to realize this. 
B but I didn't know. Oh. Oh. The question is, where did this knife come from? Why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Karita's room. Sorry, Your Honor, but that is incorrect. The victim ate the last meal before he was murdered. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what is on top of the table. There is a knife and a fork on the table. Then... Where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt on guard. Especially what was on top of his table. There is something missing. Perhaps it is a single knife? We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints and, while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt on guard's knife was missing. Uh. Mr. On Guard has gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. And with that, I believe the prosecution is proven. This was a permitted this was a premeditated murder. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. A brilliantly clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. A murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. There's quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I could safely say that any further deliberation is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown? He means evidence that the court hasn't seen yet. In other words, new evidence. What does the ev what what does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Um, well, Phoenix, the judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, that gavel of that gavel will be ringing out to the sound of our defeat. Mr. Wright, do you have something important and necessary to present to the court? Actually, I do. There's one. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see. Mr. Wright, I will say this one more time. I do not feel this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance, and only one. What the judge is saying, Wright, is don't try pulling one of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtains for all of us. You may now present one and only one piece of evidence. Now then. What is this important evidence that you must show to the court? Well, the only thing that hasn't been shown off yet that actually has some relevance to this case is the wine glass. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against his assailant. The vase was broken, his makeup all over the floor. These were all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass that is sitting on top of the dresser is mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over along with everything else is the wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further consideration. Well? What do you all have to say? Ah, well, yes. It is a little peculiar. I yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can stop looking at me with those puppy dog eyes of yours now. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion. You don't need my opinion, because there's no special meaning to that class. Uh, what? It's safe to say that the glass was set there the after the crime took place, by the person who discovered the body, Adrian Andrews, for example. She could have easily been so shocked that she set the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. Mr. Wright, could Miss Andrews really have set that glass down without thinking? 
There's no way. If I appear weak here, the trial is over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point with certainty. They just might fall for it, if you're thought-provoking enough. The defense would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. We would like to see something that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup on the table. Hmm. You've turned the situation on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back up your claim? There's no way he has any. He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never say anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? You're not thinking hard enough today, Wright. Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? Then... Of course it has been thoroughly inspected. For fingerprints. Fingerprints? There were only one set of fingerprints left on this wine glass. Only one? Well, whose were they? They were not the victims, nor the defendants. Rather, they were one of Adrian Andrews. What? That is why I said that the person who has discovered the body had left it there. Are we done here, Mr. Wright? Ah, I can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went to see Mr. Corita. But upon seeing his dead body, she was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Tisk tisk tisk. Now do you see right? You can't change any part of my scenario as it explains everything all too well. Ah. I have thought long and hard this past year about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I will show you the answer I have come to discover. Wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution provided enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness he we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. And we'll get to see this next witness in the next episode. This video went on kind of long, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.